Passover is the story of God's deliverance of the Jewish people from bondage and slavery thousands of years ago. You're going to see that God in delivering Israel from bondage and slavery in Egypt wove into the very fabric of that story a picture of a far greater redemption of all the world from the Egypt of sin through our Passover lamb, who is Jesus the Messiah. So let's travel back in time together to that first Passover story, which we find in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 12. We'll be reading verses 5 through 8 and 11 through 15. Now, if you remember at this time, Israel was in bondage. We were in slavery in Egypt, and God had promised he was going to redeem us. And so he raised up Moses and sent him to the Pharaoh of Egypt to say, Pharaoh, let my people go. Now, Pharaoh wasn't exactly willing to listen to Moses, so God had to persuade Pharaoh to listen. And God can be very persuasive when he wants to be. He persuaded Pharaoh to listen to Moses by sending a series of plagues on the land of Egypt. You remember the story. There were ten plagues in all. Now, the Jewish people living in that section of Egypt called Goshen were automatically exempt from the first nine of those ten plagues. For example, the Bible tells us when darkness fell across the land of Egypt as a plague from the Lord, there was nevertheless light in Goshen where the Israelites were living. Or when God smote the cattle of the Egyptians with plague, the cattle of the Israelites were spared. Not so with the tenth plague, the worst plague, the death of the firstborn. In order that that plague should not fall upon the Jewish people, God commanded them to take a lamb, one lamb for each family. And that's where we pick up the story, Exodus 12, beginning with verse 5. The lambs that you choose must be animals without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or from the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Now verse 11. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord." The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. For seven days you are to eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, remove the yeast from your houses, for whoever eats anything with yeast in it from the first day through the seventh must be cut off from Israel. So that then is the historical institution of Passover. We know then that the Passover, the first Passover, was celebrated on the tenth night of the plague in the land of Egypt. But as we just read, God commanded the children of Israel to continue to celebrate the Passover as a lasting ordinance. And so throughout our history, as we celebrated Passover, there were various symbols and traditions added to the observance to remind us of that first Passover back in the land of Egypt. 